that took a little bit longer than I anticipated. So very sorry. Uh, I was a little bit nervous today about going live simply for the fact that uh, Facebook was down today. Facebook and Instagram were down today for several hours, and I didn't know if we were going to get to hang out at all tonight. So far, I'm only seeing YouTube here, and I'm a little bit nervous about Facebook and uh, if it's going to connect okay. Nope, nope, whoa, whoa, I see the blue F coming in hot. Welcome, everyone, to Time Out Tuesday. Did y'all panic today whenever you tried to log into Facebook and it wasn't there? And then did you go to Messenger because that's your normal communication space for people that don't have iPhones? Uh, that's typically how I communicate with anybody who has an Android because our tech, we have like no signal to be able to send from an iPhone to Facebook. So it's always been plan B and it didn't work today. And then I didn't test this, but did WhatsApp go down too? Because they own that too. And one would think it's all connected. Uh, Steph and Steve and Bree and I were messaging back and forth. And um, Steph goes, I can't log into my Facebook. And I was like, oh no, you've been hacked. Like, like Gigi, you've been hacked. And uh, so I go back to mine really quick to look at it. And it says the same thing. It was like, please log in. And then it asked for your password, which sent my little uh, hacker radar going off. I'm like, oh, don't touch it. Don't, don't touch it. And then I finally was like, I t walked outside. I'm like, Luster, open up your Facebook app. And it did the same thing. I was like, okay, we're going to be okay here. It's just down. <laughs> it's not that we as individuals got hacked because being hacked individually, like that's, that's a pretty scary thing. Um, especially when it's part of your business, but turns out, uh, the whole world just needed a pause on that side of social media today. So, uh, Glad that it's back up and running and glad that Facebook could join us here tonight on Time Out Tuesday. Um, and and super glad that uh, if you didn't notice, then you didn't miss much. I'll just say that. Uh, a lot of people are like, I didn't notice. And other people are saying that they thought their phone was broken. I hear you. I absolutely hear you. Um, just really excited that uh, it's back up and running. Not because I spend all day on Facebook or anything like that, but it is how I connect with some of you. Um, and it is how we put our videos out. It is how it is how we earn, earn a living as well and are able to keep the sanctuary running. Anyway, hi. Welcome to Time Out Tuesday. So many of you are asking, asking for the pucker up guy. And I have some sad news for you. I'm going to have to post it on a different video because I can't get my, com this is another issue. I can't get my computer to accept. We do airdrop. If you have Mac or iPhone, Apple devices, you know that you can send through Bluetooth some of the, some things. And my computer is not willing to accept anything. So uh, I'm either gonna have to show you on my phone and like zoom in and make it really awkward like that or make a post and and I don't have like the best parts of it. Lester is actually um, running and doing a grocery pickup because I ran out of time today. Yeah, I'm that horrible person. I scheduled a grocery pickup for 9am and he got there at 6.30pm. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what footage he has it, since Sunday. Things have just been absolutely crazy around here. So we may or may not get to see the pucker guy. <laughs> but for the time being, it is Time Out Tuesday and I'm going to have a cocktail tonight. And someone sent this. Yeah, Sister Kim had to sign for it and held on to it and did not consume it. I don't know why. I told her, I was like, I would have had a drink. If that was in my house, I would have at least had to try it, stick my, stick my tongue in it just a little bit. But she did it. Someone sent me a vanilla mint shake bottle of Bailey's. So we're going to try that out tonight in this, my candle glass all the way from Illinois. Predates Xander Walker's life. So... It's, a, it's practically an antique at this point in time, according to him. So we're just going to have some of this over ice. It smells terrific. This is very uh, St. Patrick's Day-ish. And if you haven't had the mint shake at like 
the restaurant, like fast food restaurants, like McDonald's used to have one, Jack in the Box used to have one. Um, that's what this smells like. Let me give it a little swirly here. My ice was a little bit melted, so that's probably best. Somebody says, keep pouring. I don't hardly drink anymore. I have like half a cocktail with y'all and I am sleeping pretty sound on Tuesdays these days. Anyway, cheers to Time Out Tuesday. Don't look at my face. Oh. That's actually better than the, uh, the peppermint bark one. It's delicious. Like, dangerously delicious. Wow. Anyway, for those of you that don't, don't have, don't drink or anything like that, like, don't, it's, it's, there's not a mandatory, you must have a cocktail with us on Tuesday. I just feel like it's my way to take a time out. That's where the name of Time Out Tuesday came from. I was going to run with Lester to get groceries and just do Time Out Tuesday on the road. And then I really thought to myself and I'm like, you know, Time Out Tuesday got its name because Mondays are generally pretty crazy as we're back in the workflow. But for me, Tuesdays are actually worse because everything that you tried to pull back together on Monday has come back to you on Tuesday. And by the time that Tuesday is finished, I'm ready to like take a moment. Tuesdays are my busiest days. So Time Out Tuesday originated because I wanted to take a time out and hang out with y'all. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Some of you have been here for the whole time. Some of you haven't. And I just thought that I, I would share a little bit. I noticed that there are other creators doing things on Tuesdays similarly, which is great, which is wonderful. Uh, but I, I have to, I have to laugh a little bit because I, I know there's a lady who tries a drink every Tuesday. I know there are people who do giveaways on Tuesdays and, um, I, I picked Tuesday for that, for my reasons. And it's, it's always been the day that I have tried to hang out with y'all and I plan to continue that. And there's other days that we'll step in and do a few things here and there. And Lester likes to go live a lot more often than I do. But for me, the time out on Tuesday has been very refreshing. And we are over two years in to hanging out almost every Tuesday. And if I couldn't be there, uh, then other people have stepped in and have taken taken the space uh, to to spend time with you on my behalf, and that's been wonderful. But can you believe it's been over two years already, two and a half years actually, since Time Out Tuesday started? And originally, all we did was Facebook. I did not do YouTube at first, so um, it's probably closer. It's probably a little bit over two and a half years just on Facebook alone, but um, it's come a long way and it's, <laughs> it's for me, like, like I said, it's like taking a break and I feel like I'm sitting across from a friend having a conversation about what's going on in life and telling the ridiculous stories of what's happened since we hung out last and yeah, I really enjoy it and just need to say thanks for being here. Um, okay. So we have, we have a few things to review tonight. Um, um, a lot of you are asking about the gnome and where it is. The gnome is still with, with Stephanie, as I understand. I have no idea if it has switched places yet. I think tomorrow her video comes out of finding the gnome. They talked about that on the live on on Sunday afternoon. Um, so we should all be eager to see where the gnome goes next. I know a certain someone who is secretly hoping that at some point in time it ends up at the J and L ranch. Um, cause let's face it. It hasn't, it hasn't stepped foot there. It's only been here at Longhorn Lester's and the rules are that it can't go back to the person that gave it to you at the very least. Um, so I, I do know a certain someone who wants to play the game at some point in time. So if you pass that message around, that'd be great. 
So uh, Steph's, Steph and Buddy's uh, security cameras have indeed caught that entire event. I didn't know that that side of the house. Why would they have security cameras on that side of the house? There's a dumpster over there. What the heck are they trying to record and catch? Some crazy lady sneaking into their greenhouse? <laughs> Whatever. Um, it legit backfired on me. That was supposed to be an in and out sort of put it down and, and come together. And it turned out to be one of the most hilarious. And I'll be honest, nerve wracking moments uh, in a while. Uh, but it turned out to be, be pretty fun and funny. And okay, like worst case scenario, don't get me wrong. If I really was nervous, all of that stuff is like a plexiglass. Like I could have put some muscle into it. And also I could have called Steph. I could have revealed myself. Like people were, you know, really freaking out and thinking like, JB, why didn't you call 911 or those things? Well, I, I could have done all of those things if it was really serious, but I also wanted to not get caught and I was okay. It was hot. Don't get me wrong. My pores got an excellent cleansing that day, uh, but it was really fun. And that little greenhouse gets so much hotter than my greenhouse does right now. Now I have a shade cloth on mine and I have a lot more ventilation in mine, but holy moly, that little greenhouse was a cooker and it's no wonder her seed seedlings look so amazing, but I digress. Um, so that day we helped, uh, to the three of us, Steph and myself and Brie, uh, started to build her Brian's horse stalls because her horses are coming back and I'm so, so, so excited for her. Um, but it got me kind of thinking, I, I ran across this thing the other day and it made me, it made me think of not only those two women, but the rest of the women on Morrow Hill and really the rest of the women I know. And it said something along the lines of, I've never known a woman who is relaxed. I've known a woman who was successful, driven, hardworking, so good at multitasking, um, was, you know, uh, let me, let me actually find it on my phone to read to you because it was so powerful that I read it to Lester the other day and he goes, wow, that's right. Never thought of it that way. All right. Let me, let me find it here. I'm getting closer. I feel it. Here we go. You ready? All right. I knew, never knew a relaxed woman. Successful woman? Yes. Productive woman? Plenty. Anxious and afraid and apologetic woman? Heaps of them. But relaxed woman? At ease woman? Women who weren't afraid to take up space in this world? Women who prioritize rest and pleasure and play? Women who give themselves unconditional permission to relax without guilt, without apology, without feeling like they need to earn it. I'm not sure I've ever met a woman like that, but I would like to become one. I would like us all to become one. It was a meme. It, and I don't have who wrote that, but it is so true. So true. I don't know a woman who is relaxed. I don't. I don't know a woman who doesn't stress over the small things. I don't know a, a woman who doesn't take pride in being productive or doesn't, doesn't consider that like the norm. And when I went that day at the drop of a hat to go help someone else, I know I knew in my heart that yes, they would do the exact same things for me, but that is like so true. We're out there. One of Bree's kids is sleeping. The other one is out there with us and she's tending to her in between those things. Two of Stephanie's kids are at school. One is homesick. And the three of us are out here working and building and being productive, laughing, having fun, because it's normal. It's, it's normal and feels good to create something and do something on your own. But the three of us often also talk about, Hey, do you, maybe can we get tickets to the rodeo or when's the next girl's day? 
and I say the three of us, I talk about this with Lissa. I talk about this with Kate. Like most women have these days where you look forward to getting to do something or getting to do nothing. I'll even say that. But I think all of us also know that getting to do something of joy or something along those lines that we actually have to step out of our norm to do that. And that feels really weird because a lot of people are like, wouldn't you just stay home to relax? No, because we feel guilty if we're sitting around at home. There's always laundry to do. There's always a house to clean. There was another thing that um, Stephanie sent the other night in our little group chat that was like, it doesn't matter if you just clean the house. You're always cleaning the house. So you could have just literally cleaned the floor and the dogs walk in and the kids walk in and the windows are open and the dust is blowing in or there's somebody decides to clean out their room and bring, you know, all the spoons and plates that they've been hoarding um, or all the laundry. It's never ending and it doesn't fall or at least it feels like it doesn't fall to anyone else besides us women. So for us to sit around and see all those things around us doesn't give us a day off because it's still here. So as we're sitting there talking about things to go do or, you know, uh, or like, even if, even if it meant just going to tractor supply together to, to take a little break, that is actually relaxing to be able to make the time for yourself. And it removes the guilt because you're not staring at all of the other things. Now, when you get home or before you leave, yes, there's a million, there's a buildup to that and sort of like a, a penance that you pay when you get back. But I don't know why that is because I don't think that I'm sorry to, to make this a gender thing. I don't think that Lester or most men feel guilty about what's not done at home. I don't think they think twice about those things. They're just like, they do their, like, don't get me wrong. Lester works his tail off. And and the, the men that I know also work their tail off. But I don't think that their brains work in the same way of like the guilt for doing something that brings them joy. Does that make any sense? I don't know. I, I don't think that they have that same like feeling of if I don't get this done, I'm not worthy or I didn't meet the expectations of myself. I don't even think that they put it on up. Like, I don't think it's reversed of where they expect it out of us. We, we do that enough to ourselves to expect it. Um, so I just, that like hit home of like, I don't know a relaxed woman. I genuinely do not know a relaxed woman at all. So with that being said, uh, all of us girls are <laughs> every day talking about all the things about like, oh, we should do this. We should do this. We should do this. Um, and most of the time it's very simple things. It's nothing extravagant, but it is, there's a birthday next week. Uh, Steve, AKA Stephanie, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell it for anybody that doesn't know that side of things. I'll tell you in just a second. Um, Stephanie's birthday is next week. And I would, I would like to make it a priority for us girls to go and do something, even if it is run to Walmart or tractor supply together, just to be able to have just a, a little timeout and it may be on a Tuesday, who knows? Um, so those of you that don't know, I don't know why, but my, my talk to text, when I say Steph, it turns it to Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, Steve not S Steph. So <laughs> Steph is now Steve. Um, and I'm going to ask for a few prayers for our very special Steve because she's not feeling too hot. And uh, she has been laid up for the last two days, still doing all of her mom stuff, of course, still squeezing all of those things in that we talked about. Um, but you could say a few prayers for her to get better before her birthday, because we're going to, we're going to do something for Steph's birthday. Steve's birthday. Steve was here on Saturday. Uh, there's a video of that coming out tomorrow. I can't wait to share that with you. You probably saw part of her version already on YouTube. I think I saw, I think that's where I saw it. Um, I did request her assistance with some garden advice. Uh, so really excited uh, to show you the outcome and the plans for the garden and, and how far it's come 
pretty pretty proud to say that uh, my knees are sore. <laughs> my knees. This is the first time uh, for an in-ground garden for me. Uh, you know, I'm used to the the one where I have to bend over awkwardly because it's at such a weird space, a uh, weird level, and my back usually hurts. But now, I I've been wearing yoga pants longer in this you know in the year than I normally do. Normally, it's like dress and flip flop time for me, or dress and boots anyway. And I've kept my long pants on because I was like, oh, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to stain my knees from dirt or the color from the weed barrier or whatever it is but they are a little sore from crawling around in that garden now for about a week uh so more to come on that video tomorrow but steve steve was in the house uh i'm really blessed to say that we didn't share that much air because it was windy that day and i hope that I hope that I did not catch whatever funk that she has. I'm guessing that she has what Elora had, um, which is a little scary because Elora was very sick. Um, so say a few prayers for Steph and the rest of that household. Uh, I told her today that I was going to drop off some bleach and Lysol and just come open all the windows and wear a mask and fumigate her house for her. But uh, she still had a fever, so I'm not going yet. <laughs> I'm not interested in catching whatever that is. Uh, she also saved me from a certain death that day. And that's two in a week that I had to be saved by two other women. You know, Bree saved me from the greenhouse and Steph saved me from, from Greg the Frog. Um, Gregory the Frog was lurking in my seed thingy, my, my, my little clip it up thing. And he was gray. I've never so those are like little green frogs that are greener typically than this. Like they're limeish green, neon green. And I'm flipping through those seeds, and all of a sudden the packet moves and it touched my it touched my finger. I don't like frogs. I know for everyone saying, like, you have a garden, you're gonna have to get used to snakes and frogs and worms and Bugs and all those things. Like, look, I can handle bugs, spiders. I'll kill the grubs myself. But earthworms and snakes and frogs, like, mm -mm, no, not going to do it. So then, so then she put it out in the little stair steppy things that I had, the little planters on the front porch of the greenhouse. And the next day I had left my jacket on the chair. I went to put that jacket on. And freaking Greg was in my jacket. I almost threw up. I threw that thing down like it was on fire. And just like, ugh, it's still sitting out there. I can't bring myself to pick up the jacket. It's still sitting on the ground in front of the greenhouse because Greg was in it. He's probably living in it forever. I'll never get my jacket back. Two saves, one week. I owe both of them my life at this point in time. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people who are like, Jamie, how can you ever uh, invite Tina to do thing or Sister Kim or G or Megan or anything like that? Like everybody's schedule is very different and everybody's priorities and lives are very different. And sometimes you connect with others in different ways and you have the same likes or the, you know, same interest, that type of thing, that sort of thing. And you just connect in that way. It's not that no one else is invited. It's that sometimes, I mean, Tina's a school teacher and she's going through some health stuff. Kim has a lot to do with Levi. G watches kids all the time. I know that Megan has a lot going on. Um, and Lissa hasn't felt the best. So like, this is just, this is somewhat of how it has evolved. So it's not that it's not that I don't put out a everyone's invited thing or anything like that. It's just like some days you just text who you know has a little bit of free time to do something with. And that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. Um, also, we're all there's too many of us to fit in one single vehicle. And like I said, like it's 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 very hard to coordinate everyone and to to get everybody together. So please don't give me a hard time about why didn't you invite so and so. I, I also am not the coordinator of all of the events or the, the person that needs to invite 
all the things. And then it kind of goes on the flip side too of like, I don't, I'm not invited to all the things that they do. It, it's the same, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, it's okay to do things with certain people and, and to just make things happen. And sometimes we do invite them and other people can't come, but we don't point blank and go, here was the list of everybody that was invited and this who could got here. Welcome to the video. <laughs> so don't, don't be offended, please. Don't be offended. Um, okay. So y'all saw the Luna moth that I made a video of. And then I confessed to you last week that I killed it. I killed two. So I was all freaked out thinking like anything negative that was going to happen was because I killed this moth who was supposed to be like, good luck. And people were like, if you saw it fly, you'd believe in fairies and you know, all the things, right? And then I killed it and I confessed to y'all. I didn't have to tell you that I did it, but I did because I was like, oh my God, it's going to lay all these worms in my garden and caterpillars and it's going to eat all of everything. And that was before I knew. Well, I'm here to tell you that those rare moths must have had one heck of a laying fest last year around here because not only was there a new one in the shop last night, when I walked outside around 11 o'clock to close the door because it was going to rain, I'm not kidding you. I didn't have my phone with me because I got a little bit freaked out. There was like a herd of them, a flock. I don't know what you call like a gaggle of moss, but those Luna fairy looking lime green moths, okay, that are like this, this big. It was like, do you know the movie, The Birds, where you walk out and like the birds are all in the trees and they're all around you and all of those things. They were everywhere in the shop. I had to turn off the lights because they were all in there because of the light. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, but it was like hundreds of these lunar, Luna, Luna, mo Luna moths. Yes. Everywhere. It was a little freaky. Okay. Like a little bit much. It was like, Oh, you killed our friend. We're coming for you. Even though we have no mouth and we can't bite you and we have no stomach to eat anything. We're coming for you. And we're going to lay our eggs everywhere. The cats were scared. The dogs were freaked out hiding underneath the RV. It was that crazy. So what did I do? I turned off the lights. I actually left the doors open and I ran back in the house and went to bed because mm -mm, no, thank you. No. That's the stuff nightmares are made of. So uh, I'm over those moths and they can go now. They can absolutely go now. <sighs> and then to top it off, if you watched my video on Facebook about the ants, the leaf miner ants. So I have two gardenia plants that have been in my landscape for some time. And I woke up Saturday morning and what had been there the day before was gone that morning. And I finally figured out that these ants come out and they carve and they eat all the all foliage and they hoof that back to their hole, which can go up to 2,100 feet into the ground and can be miles and miles long underground. They're gigantic caverns. And what they do with those with the leaves is not eat them. They bring it back and they emit something that creates, that helps it build a fungus to erode the ground underneath. They're literally mining the ground underneath where you live, if you have them. They started out in like Africa or something. And a few years ago ended up in East Texas thanks to whoever brought that fresh hell over because they're everywhere here. And I found stuff to be able to keep them out of, well, what I thought was keep them out of the landscaping. I have four different things poured out between Amdra, which is for fire ants. Um, of course, I put seven dust on everything. Uh, I put... Uh, BT on everything. And then I also have this stuff called surrender, which smells, I have never, this smells like 
the most god awful sulfur plus raw sewage smell ever in a in a can. And I poured it all over the trail and tried my best to be able to find where they're going in at. Well, it turns out Luster's out there feeding on Sunday night and goes, I think we have some different ants out here than he hadn't watched the video. Then fire ants, he goes, because they're carrying all the grain into this hole. When I tell you that there are hundreds of holes and hundreds of thousands of these ants all over the property, I'm not kidding. They're everywhere. And I've called, I don't know, 15 different exterminator companies and they're like, we don't have anything to get rid of those. So I found uh, um, more surrender. Thank goodness. I went back to the Livingston feed store and found some of that because it seems to be at least deterring them. It's not, it's slowing them down, but I haven't seen them all like, they're not just like piled up dead. So that means they're going somewhere, which is awful. But there's a lot of people who have sent a lot of emails about things to do with them. There is something that's coming in the mail tomorrow that I ordered. That's a, it's a dilute thing that you put down and, and, and into their holes and it'll destroy the fungus, which destroys them. Um, but there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, go ahead and pour some gasoline in those holes and burn them. And all I can think about is like, what, what, what would be down there? Like all the things that they've carried is it going to like, like come back out at us and like explode at that point in time? I don't know, but I need like an anteater armadillos, which I, uh, here's what I'm piecing together. They're natural predators armadillos. I believe that our dogs have ran away the armadillos, which would mean that it allowed the ants to come in. I don't know what else to do. Like, I don't want armadillos. They're a carrier of, um, oh my gosh, leprosy. I don't want any, I don't want leprosy, not a big fan of that. But at the same thing, like the same time, like they can destroy 20 acres overnight if you have them bad enough. So Part of this week's adventure is to go down the side of the bluff and figure out where all these holes are and to load it with this chemical after it arrives tomorrow and hope, just hope. And I'm also nervous that if like, if we torch one end, is it going to like flame up in the pasture in another space? Like there's so many what ifs that go to this and there's no way to tell. I have that camera that's a scope that... If you remember last year's mystery hole, which maybe it is ants that's in that hole. I don't know. But I'm so nervous about what is underneath us. We already have erosion problems. To think that an ant colony could create caves underneath. Like if you Google leaf miner ants and what they're capable of underground, your mind will be blown. And diamaceous earth doesn't help uh, at all. I... I have had that in my, in my gardens, you know, diamaceous earth helps with tiny little bugs. It does not help with leaf miner ants. They're completely immune to it. They do not give one single care about diamaceous earth. They literally walked right over it. I felt like they looked over their shoulder and we were like, that's all you got. Same thing with seven dust. Didn't even flinch. It's scary to think of. And, um, we have fire ants and we've always put out Amdro and they were gone, you know, in a week or so. And I never thought anything about ants that would literally eat all the foliage, foliage that you have, kill the trees, kill the grass and haul it away. And then mine underneath the ground to be able to create caverns. And it, it's wild to think about, like, it's one of those things in nature where I'm like, who decided this was a good idea to create it? Like, tell me, tell me its purpose and it's good because I just don't see it. Just don't see it. Don't see it with fire ants. Kind of see it with stinging nettles now because I know that stinging nettles burns like heck whenever it touches your flesh, but I know it has medicinal purposes. Um, don't really see it with snakes. Not really sure what benefit that they are. <laughs> 
Uh, spiders, I can I can get behind spiders. They eat some flies. That's okay. But leaf cutter ants or leaf miner ants, like wild. Um, I did go on the Texas A and M uh, website, which is basically our agricultural arm, and they had three solutions for it, and one of them was literally but like like this article was practically written in pencil and scanned and it was like you can try whatever chemical that i ordered it's it comes in a in a white concentrated bottle with a purple lid i think it starts with a d um and then uh it says that fire ant treatment is about 30 percent effective uh and then the other part was burn them out it literally said to pour gasoline or diesel down the hole and light it on fire and i'm not making it up that like <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things on the ag extension website about so many things but this one was like somebody wrote this on a napkin one time at a bar and was basically like this is all we got this is this is the best that we can do <laughs> so we're gonna try it um a lot of people are saying about borax. I'll have to look at the chemical makeup of that to see if it's one of the things that would impact them. Um, so far, I haven't had a lot of luck with borax. <laughs> Somebody also says you're going to need to give Fire Chief Chris some warning on that. That's probably that's probably appropriate as well. Uh, it's always something, though. Really, it it legitimately is, and. I don't want to admit this, but there are times where I feel like this property is cursed and it'll go in waves, you know, um, hold on. There are times where it felt like everything around us was breaking or going out and just all hell was breaking loose at the exact same time. And it was simple things like the stupid handle on the toilet broke like 17 times last year and it would always break right before we were supposed to have people over and what turns out is like after i have really educated myself on how to fix a stupid toilet is that the water pressure here is so high i guess from pumping it up the hill or whatever that the suction thingy on the toilet closes so hard that it pulls the chain down and stripped, stripped the little handle thingy because the people flush, they're pushing really hard trying to get that suction thing open. That sounds so dumb, right? Well, it took 27 handle replacements to finally figure out that that's what was going on and that I needed to find a way to create less water pressure in the toilet refill. And then in all of that toilet replacement, I learned that we have a mini tank on the toilet, which was causing other things. But the reason we have a mini tank is because where the toilet goes is like super small and barely fits. You couldn't, whenever they they built that part, they didn't really think about a door going in, in there to close and open it. So we have some sort of like super special toilet that they don't make anymore and don't make parts for anymore either, which was awesome because the arm that comes off of your toilet flushy thingy has to bend a certain way. So I had to literally make my own kit from like seven kits to be able to fit in this toilet. <laughs> All at the same time, the, the furnace and AC were going out, the kitchen sink clogged, uh, <laughs> something happened with the well, like the garage door broke. Like it was just like everything all at once. And I really thought like, I'm, I'm being tested like in crazy, crazy ways. And we got it all taken care of and it was all back to normal. And now somebody, the universe is like, Hey, you look, you look like you need something to do. Here's some ants that are going to eat all of the things. And they're going to bury and burrow underneath all of your property and make big old caverns. How do you feel about that? You were, you looked bored. I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored. I had plenty to do. Trust me. <laughs> so, yeah. It's very interesting. Hmm. 
Maybe your Indian chief stole, maybe your Indian chief's mad, you know? There was a point in time where I told Lester, I was like, it was right around the time that the, the dam to the pond failed and we had to rebuild the driveway. And it was just like all of it, all at once. And it was so much that I was like, we need to like repent or <laughs> say we're sorry to someone or ask for forgiveness, whatever you took out of somewhere, put it back or, you know, all of those things. Like literally we needed to balance the juju here to be able to make things take a breath and just pause for a second. It is gotten, it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, but it really was like wild for a while. And it was so relentless that we were both looking at each other. Like, I don't get it. What have we done? <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people are saying to get chickens to eat those ants. I don't know if they would eat those ants. I don't know. Those ants were so smart. They formed they, all across the pasture. I think Lester is going to make a video about the ones in the pasture and what he found. But they form like a three to four inch path wherever they go, like through the grass, through everything. It looks like almost like a donkey path, except for it's from ants just making their way back and forth all the way to their feasting place. And the other thing that doesn't make any sense to me is they have all of the woods all of the woods. Why you got to come up here to things that I have purposely and intentionally put here? Why can't you go across the river where there's like a thousand acres of uninhab like uninhabited woods? They're just woods over there full of things to just feast on and to deal with. I don't, I don't get it. Why? Why here? <laughs> I have more research to do, but there's not a lot out there. There's really not uh, because they're not very common in the U.S. And be very grateful if you've never had the experience of one because it's it's actually quite terrifying. Um, their little bodies are like armored and they have spiky thingies on their back to hold the leaves that they're carrying. As you know, ants can carry things up to 10 times their weight. They're like billboarding it across across the yard with the leaves that they're cutting in perfect circles by the way which is crazy anyway so that's what's happening here we're being eaten alive by ants and can't flush our toilet <laughs> i'm kidding i fixed the toilet <laughs> carpenter ants i've seen carpenter ants too and they talked about those um someone told us about pyramid ants. Uh, those are scary. Don't want to experience those. Uh, pretty much have my fill of ants and could live my whole life without ever seeing another one. Don't really see a need for them in my life at all. So uh, really happy to part ways with any ants ever. Bree has underground bees. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, It's been wild. Oh, what about the gunshot? Marilyn says, yeah. So if you watched my Facebook video this morning, I was out just walking around to show everyone how quiet it actually was this morning because there really weren't even any um, birds chirping at first. It was actually um, eerily quiet. It was foggy, so not a lot of noise could travel as well. But as I make my way all the way around, all of a sudden there's a gunshot, which freaks me out because I didn't see the dogs up to that point, the, the big dogs that had been outside and um, got really nervous that someone was shooting at our dogs or, or that our dogs were not where they're supposed to be. Um, so it turned out our dogs were down at the river and perfectly allowed to be down at the river. Um, I did message Mr. David and Miss Pat. It was not them. Um, the neighbor across the street says it was not them. Uh, it sounded like it was right there. It was not Mr. Kenny as well. So we don't actually know who the gunshot was uh, at this time. But the neighbors that we do know and the neighbors that they know all said it wasn't them. The only thing I can say is the rest of the day, 
someone was definitely shooting across the river, not shooting from our side of the river across, but across the river, they were shooting something as well, but it was not nearly as close. Usually Mr. David, if he's going to shoot something like they have had mole problems or they have, uh, they have a lot of snakes and stuff. He'll send a message and say, that was me. Or I'm, I, uh, I told Miss Pat, you know, to message you because I'm going to shoot the snake or whatever the case is. And we do the same thing of like, if we're going to shoot our guns for some reason, we want them to know that there, there's nothing to be alarmed about. So this morning, everybody's texting and it was no one, but it obviously happened. Um, it didn't, it didn't happen again that close. So all I can think about is like, it's a neighbor that we didn't know, or because of the, because of the fog and, and the weird sound that was going on, it sounded closer than it was. Maybe it really did come from across the river. I'm not sure. Um, but it definitely, it definitely spooked everybody around here. The horses took off running, uh, all the dogs came home. Uh, so yeah, it was a, uh, it was a little bit of a scary moment this morning but everybody's okay. So all good on that front. Squatters or illegal hunters. It could be, it could absolutely be. Um, I'm trying to read comments and see if there's anything else that anybody, Oh, Rebecca says, when are we going to see an RV trip? You got to talk to Les tomorrow about that. Because I'm ready. Really ready. I would say, how is Stella after getting lost? Did Stella get lost? I don't know that Stella got lost. I don't think Stella was lost. Stella doesn't go too far. Um, oh, she fell off the side-by-side -side at JL Ranch. Poor baby. I didn't know that. I've been working and have not had time to, to do that. Let me see if I can show you the pucker footage. It's not as good as, as seeing it in real life and I can't get it to transfer to my computer. So you have to watch it like me holding up my phone. So hold on, I'm gonna blow it up. <laughs> you can't see it very well. <laughs> Because of my ring light. <laughs> Hold on. Because I really was watching the game. But that guy was like so serious. Hold on. He's coming back I think. That's a lie. Uh, Lester called him like a thoroughbred. He like. He like ran in place. Wait, my finger's going the right. He like ran in place. Like, like would sit there and jog in place. Like he was, uh, oh my gosh. Simmons, Richard Simmons, like pony in place, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and so anxious. And then would like run down the field and then run back and like run in place, run in place, run in place. And like no one else was doing that. And then whenever he would make a call, he would like stick his chest out really far and pucker his butt. Sorry for that description. And his shorts would go all the way up, like all the way up. And he would like make his call, like hold it out here so proudly with his flag. And like all of his movements were like watching professional cheerleaders make movements that they practiced and over practiced and practiced again. I asked Lester, he he's getting groceries. Um, I asked him if he had any of the... Uh, He says he doesn't have any of them. And he said he went to JNL to just do one quick check after he picked up groceries. And he was putting the buggy back in and he accidentally let all the cows out. So there's that. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, that, that ref made that soccer game crazy entertaining. I actually was like, I wonder if, if he refs here all the time and if I should bring the girls back for a soccer game because it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. And I don't know if those things are televised, but if they are, man, do I highly recommend that you find the game between 
Houston Dynamo and New York Red Bull and look for that ref because it was worth it. So, so worth it. Uh, Lester's having a rough day, I guess. Because he hasn't responded to, does he need help? That'll be fun. Wrangling cows in the dark. They should follow, they should follow the wagon though. So as long as he puts the wagon back in, he should be able to handle that. Hopefully he closed the gate of the road. Hopefully. I'm sure there'll be a video. Anyway. <laughs> oh, somebody says, at least his cows aren't dying then if they're up and about. His cows are not dying. He's so dramatic. And he likes to tell me like, hey, Jamie, you out there playing My Little Pony and scraping horse feet and brushing and combing and braiding and all those things. But he's just as bad with those longhorns, y'all. They have food, clean water, pond water, grass, beautiful fencing, all the cameras on them, everything. But he will drive out there sometimes two times a day to go hang out with his longhorns and to to helicopter them a little bit. And he wants to tell me that I am the helicopter mom around here and helicopter gardener, but uh, Lester Morrow is the OG helicopter by far. And the fact he's like, why are they laying down? I don't know, because it's going to rain. He's like, cows don't lay down when it's going to rain. My grandfather, we would be driving and pass a farm, a cow dairy farm, and the cows are going to, the cows are laying down and there's not a cloud in the sky and it's sunny out. And he would say, it's going to rain. Cows are laying down. And the other thing that he would say is if the flies are biting, it's going to rain. No. Lester's like, I've never heard that in my whole life. I know that it's true. I know that it's true. So when the cows are laying down out there, it's just going to rain. Or, I don't know, they're tired. They're just tired. Somebody says, did he notice the spoon? Not yet. In fact, in fact, he brought two hats uh, on Saturday night to to go out with with the boys. One of them had the spoon on it, and I think it was I'm a Survivor, and the other one was just Longhorn Lester's. And he he had a Longhorn Lester jacket on, and a I'm a Survivor shirt on. I'm pretty sure. And he's he likes his he likes to wear one or the other. So he had his I'm a Survivor shirt on, t like his polo shirt on, and then he was wearing his Longhorn Lester hat when we went to the game place. And then when we went to the soccer game, he grabbed his jacket, and I saw him, like, have that moment of, like, which hat, you know, like, which hat do I grab? And it had nothing to do with the spoon. He wasn't even noticing the spoon still. It is completely unscathed, and he doesn't watch my live or my video, so he has no idea that the little spoon is back and alive. No clue. It's going to be fine, though. It's going to be totally fine. Did y'all see him get stuck in the chair? Like, what man doesn't just take the jacket off? Instead, bring, like, like he's a little kid. Like, Mom, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Takes the whole chair over to me to get the dang zipper out of the thing. And then does it by himself. I love him. I, I do love him. <sighs> Denise says, what's up with the spoon? Oh, Denise, you missed a few things. Lester likes to be the little spoon, and he earned that name this summer or this winter, and it will never die. And now somebody has sent a, a little spoon pin, and I've put it on his hat, and he has no idea that it's on his hat. So, yeah. It's been a wild week, and it's only Tuesday. And apparently, apparently he is dealing with some cows being out now. Oh my gosh. Pawpaw did get stuck in a chair once. That was the funniest video that those two have ever put out. I laughed hysterically. And I, someone messaged me and said, Lester's dad got stuck in a chair. And I, and it's on video. I watched that video and laughed till I cried. And then I had to come out of the tub and tell Lester about that video. And he watched it till he cried. Like it those chairs are something else to get out of. I, I don't disagree. But watching that shit show unfold was like one of the best moments ever, ever, ever. Ooh, I do have exciting news about Pawpaw that I don't know if he has shared yet. Um, 
so you know that I really struggled with, I'll say abandoning the garden at I'm a survivor or at least not being able to utilize it. Um, I know in my gut that I cannot be there every day. And then it's not my, I can't expect anybody else to care about it or to want to, to utilize or, or keep up with my garden. So I was considering bringing it over here or turning it into just, you know, rocks and some bushes, that type of thing. Um, but I also reached out to Papa and said, Hey, I don't know if you're planning on doing a garden this year, but one thing that I've realized is that getting down on the ground to garden is a lot harder than a raised bed. And that garden is over there empty. If you'd like to utilize it, um, we just need to refresh the soil, but it's, it's a perfect, like it is a perfect garden. It's a perfect size garden. Um, and so he said, I'll go check it out. So he messaged me about a week ago and was like, I think I'll throw a few plants in there. So what he didn't know until last night was that this weekend, uh, we refreshed that garden, got it all filled back up with dirt, got all the weeds pulled out of it and got it all ready for him to use. So, uh, I'm so like this, this sounds so silly, but to know that that garden is going to be utilized to continue to provide whether it's peace of mind of being able to put your hands in the dirt or to be able to, to actually grow food to eat, what, whatever. I don't care if somebody grows flowers in it, whatever the case is, it's being utilized. And that makes my heart like so, so, so happy. Um, so Papa is going to use the garden. I'm a survivor and I can't like, I can't wait to see what he's going to put in it. I'm going to sneak a few things in it and I'm going to ask Steve, Steph, if she wants to sneak a few things in it as well be, that Papa would like. Um, and he usually does cucumbers and tomatoes. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll stick a few extra fun things in there that will surprise him as well. Maybe he'll get gnomed. It's not my job to gnome him though. It's, it's Steph's job to pass on the gnome. And then if you know, the rules are that you have to add something to it from your home anything to it. So the collection should grow as things continue to be passed along. And I'm excited for that too. Ooh, okra's a good idea. He's doing cucumbers and squash at his house and mostly tomatoes at the sanctuary. Good to know. Um, good to know. We'll see. We'll see what we can sneak in there. That pop, if Papa's gonna, if Papa's gonna put tomatoes in there, that means he's gonna be over there to check it all the time. So that means that you know, throwing a thing or two in there would not bother him. Uh, somebody says, "Are you planting rhubarb?" I have about eight rhubarb, eight rhubarb plants here going, and believe it or not, they make really pretty foliage too. They are actually in my flower bed. Um, I don't know if he. I don't. I know that he. Papa eats. Uh, they do stuffed peppers a lot. So, so green peppers might not be a bad idea. Oh my gosh. I found a pepper. It's in my video for tomorrow with the funniest name ever. And I've never seen it in any seed catalog or anything that Steph has talked about. I found it actually at tractor supply on Sunday when I was buying more of the ant killer stuff or looking for more of the ant killer stuff. Here's this pepper plant that I'd never heard of and had such a funny name that I had to put it in my garden. So it was the only cheater plant that I bought. Be so proud. The rest I have grown from seed. Uh, and that will be in my video tomorrow morning as well. Uh, stewed rhubarb ice cream and custard are my favorite. I have never had that. I love rhubarb pie. And then I like a rhubarb crisp that my grandma makes and like rhubarb cake or um, things like that. And if you've never had rhubarb, it's like a, it looks like a celery stalk, except for it's mostly red, has some green in it. And, uh, the leaves are poisonous to animals and humans. Don't eat the, don't eat the leaves. Uh, but the stalks are like a soury flavor that is very unique, but has the texture of like celery. Um, and a lot of people make like strawberry rhubarb pie or straw and they'll, they'll mix that, um, I've, I've had strawberry rhubarb jelly as well now. I love that. Um, so I intend to kind of go crazy. I, rhubarb pie is my most favorite pie. And my grandma's recipe is the most easy in the world to make. Uh, so 
Lester wouldn't try it a few years ago, but this year he's he's going to try it. I, I'm going to just have to make him. Um, and then I will see what else I can whip up. The other thing that I think is going to be pretty prolific this year for the first time is, are my fig trees. Um, I think we're going to have quite a few figs. So last year I got about 16 off of them and I froze them. I would like to make jelly out of them. I think I'm just going to make a very small, probably two little jars of jelly just to say I did it this year. Uh, but I think that this summer I should probably have a pretty robust amount of figs. And then, um, my citrus trees are really taking off right now. And I'm like doing backflips about that. Uh, I lost quite a bit of fruit trees. I would love to say that it was to the weather, but it was not, it was to goats. Uh, so I do have some high hopes of getting some replacements for those, but if I don't get them right now, then it's going to have to wait till fall because it, it's just about to time out of planting season for those. Um, so we'll see. I've never had fig pudding. That's interesting. And I, somebody says, try rhubarb juice. I'm not opposed to that. I, uh, I received a juicer as a gift with my injury and I've not tried it yet. Uh, but with all the produce that is going to come from the garden this summer, I'm probably going to venture down that path. Um, we are going to have carrots, cucumbers, squash, tomatoes, uh, green beans, corn, onions, potatoes, asparagus, artichoke, broccoli. Oh my God. I got two strawberries today. That was huge. Really huge. I ate them both directly out of the garden. I'll probably have bugs in my body now because I didn't even spray them off. I just ate them. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. Celery. I have lots of celery. <laughs> I have tried my hardest to give away celery to every single person who is planting or growing anything around here. And everybody's like, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't need any celery. And Steph finally goes the other day. So, so like, why did you plant so much celery? Because I have like a hundred celery plants. Well, it's not that I planted that much celery. It's that celery seed is the tiniest speck of nothingness. And I put it in, it came in a little tiny packet and I just put it in a pot, like this big of a pot, like a three inch square pot. And it turns out like it all grew, all of it. I like had microgreens of celery and I was like, it's winter time and I was kind of bored. So I pulled those out, those little finest frog hair things and put it in bigger pots and separated it. And then I separated it again and again, and it's still growing. And now I have like a hundred celery plants. No one on earth can eat that much celery. I'm sure of it. Uh, so we're going to see, we're going to, maybe, maybe I'll end up juicing it. We'll see. I do love celery, but I, uh, I don't necessarily need that many celery plants per se. Uh, y'all said Jake and Lisa bought fruit cocktail trees. I saw a video of them planting them. I was so excited for that. I do have one of them, but it hasn't ever produced fruit yet. Um, it will like, so it's on one trunk and it'll have like four or five different fruit varieties that come out of it. And each, uh, if it's like the one that I got, each limb has a little tag around it telling you what it is. So far, the only ones that are alive this year are the plums. Uh, the rest of it looks not so great. So I might end up with just a plum, plum tree or who knows uh, how that'll go. I've never seen a full grown one in real life and the fruit that it produces, but my curiosity is just peaked. It has a lot to do with grafting which I had no idea was a thing until about two years ago. Oh, let's see here. Freeze the celery for soups. I have a lot of frozen <laughs> celery. I really do. It's a whole lot of Bloody Marys to make, I guess. But the ostriches do eat it. Um, the goats will eat it. Uh, the ostriches love kale the most, though and cabbage, but kale, they'll even eat the stalks like broccoli stalks. Like I'll break it up and they'll eat the stalks and everything of it. So I have two kale plants that just keep going and going and going. And they're like nine months old. And I don't intend to get rid of them because it's the ostrich's most favorite snack in the world. And it's very healthy for everyone. Um, and I like kale as well, but, um, 
I don't know. Maybe I'll freeze dry some of that, take an adventure down that path as well. I have not given the horses any celery. You know, the horses are, you're not going to believe this. The horses have had no grain since they've come here. They have only had hay and grass. And I really genuinely feel like they're doing really well with that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes in the summer and how the grass sustains. Um, but I, I want them to have that kind of nutrition um, it's not bad to feed your horses grain if they need it, but I think that I learned a lot with Dixie on nutrition for horses and really want to cut back on some of the things that we thought was really important in their diet. Um, and that's, it's different for every single horse. Um, but for ours, we should be able to have enough nutrition from the grass for now. Who knows what the weather will do this summer. Um, but between that, alfalfa, which is our green hay, and then the dry horse hay, I think we're doing a pretty good, a, a pretty good diet. Um, all right, a few more things. Because I'm over an hour already. I've been rambling on for a whole dang hour to y'all. Um, the CBD oil for Tina. So I have not found anything to put it in yet that she likes. I tried to inject it into grapes that did not go well, uh, at all for whatever reason it, it like leaked directly out and, and it would not hold anything. So that didn't, that didn't go well. Um, but she's been resting. And I honestly have no idea what she did to, escalate like to, to make that have a flare-up because you can't the, normally when she has a flare-up her knee will like hold fluid and swell up pretty bad and it didn't do any of that so um i, I was thinking about just drenching the kale in the cbd oil because she'll eat it like that but it just slides right off i don't know we'll see what i can come up with i, I may make like a bread ball of some sort <laughs> and dip it in oil we'll see well, absolutely see, dip the, you know, soak some, some goldfish in it. Um, I'm going to get some in her and see if I can give her some relief and, and go from there. Anyway, my computer just told me that it's going to die. So I think that that's my official cue to, uh, tell y'all good night. I'm going to call Lester and see if he needs help with the cows. And, uh, I'm sure there'll be a video about all those things as well. Thank you for joining me on Time Out Tuesday in my office and uh, for being a part of every day, for loving me, for loving us, and putting up with all of the craziness that happens around here. I really, really enjoy taking a time out with y'all on Tuesday and hope that maybe, maybe that whole relaxed talk will hit home with you as well, that somewhere inside of us we have to be able to find the okay button to just relax every once in a while because we deserve it. There are some great things coming out this week. Uh, like I said, tomorrow, I can't wait to tell you the name of that pepper and to show you what the garden plans hold and so much more for the rest of this week. I love you all so very much and uh, just want to say thanks for giving me the greatest gift of all, which is your time. So, have a fabulous Tuesday night, and I'll see you on the next video.